Lose the graphic, please. Lose the graphic. One, three, take three kills. Hey guys, I'm Julie Fish, and you're watching the journal. Take a look at what's coming up on today's show. Themselves feel that that they they need to see a black figure or somebody you know who resembles them or or is in their culture, teaching them to help them through. But I think it's an individual thing. A person decides whether or not they want to make it or they want to break it. Tattooers that I was working with and the clientele that we had and learned a lot about uh, the dynamic of tattooing. And there are definitely styles in meditation that require you to stay still for an hour, but I find that once you kind of encourage people to try things out a bit, they're more open to different forms of meditation. Rough, especially with stick work. The stick work being like hooking, grabbing, flashing, all the stuff that you're really not supposed to do and it's probably made up for the bad way to put it. Located at the intersection of St. George and Bloor in the heart of downtown at the University of Toronto is the Innisfil College Cinema. Holding only 150 people, it shows the best of foreign films ranging from Russian to French to Japanese. All that and more on today's Ready journal. Right. Stay tuned. Go right, take right. to our show. Our first piece, we have lots of great pieces on the show today, including a rap performance by Toronto's own felon. Uh, but first, we have our first uh, piece by Jermaine Ingram. He decided to do a little inquiry on the uh, controversial topic of black, all black schools in Canada. Take a look. Toronto is widely diverse with several ethnic groups residing in the city. Although multiculturalism is a positive look, it causes ethnic groups to have programs steered towards their culture. The city of Toronto is going ahead with plans to open up a black alternative school by the fall of 2009. There has been many controversies over these issues. Educators, politicians, media, and even parents have lined up on both sides. I think this whole thing, it does not make sense. We don't need no black schools. For what? It's going to create problems, you know? I don't even think it has any negative effects. I mean, there's different schools for different people, like just Jewish schools, there's private schools, there's Christians. So why can't they do it, you know? What's the difference with them? One of the many educators that are against the future institution is Mr. Neil Blackwood. He voices his opinion on the effect of building a black school. The country that we live in is a multicultural country where, you know, we should all live in harmony, as it were, and uh, everybody should be our brother or sister, as it were. Uh, we should all be working together, as I say, in harmony. And presently we're having problems um, in this country where there's prejudice and people are discriminating against others. And this doesn't help us or help such a situation. I think it's drifting and more or less giving rise to more of this problem in the country. Mm -hmm. So I think the more we are together, uh, the more we learn to live together in harmony. The main purpose of the school is for teachers to have more one-on-one -on -one time by mentoring and educating their students. Some people agree this school is an opportunity. It's just a school that focuses and has some black curriculum in it, more so than other schools. And so I think that's a good opportunity for children who don't really get to see that a lot, to um, see that there's more black role models and like black people that actually do things with their lives. I personally think it's a, it's a good thing. It gives them more opportunity to, because I've seen a lot of problems in schools when it came to Africans and suspensions and all of that. So I think it's a good idea. I am not sure this will work, as it were. Um, it might work for a few people who feel that they're dropping out, but 
I think each child should know his or her destiny. I'm, I'm sure, well, some people are not mature enough to handle certain situation in life. And I think that's one of the biggest problems here in this country. Our, our, our students themselves feel that, that they, they need to see a black figure or somebody, you know, who resembles them or, or is in their culture teaching them to help them through. But I think it's an individual thing. A person decides whether or not they want to make it or they want to break it. But it's all on the individual. The Toronto District School Board statistics show 40% of black students drop out of high school by grade 10. 16% of them are Caribbean. We have dropouts because perhaps some students don't like certain teachers, not knowing that they're doing harm to themselves and they decide not to learn. So if you decide not to learn, then you won't learn, as it were. You have to really sit there and decide that, well, this is good for me, not because of his color, or I should not feel that because of my color or race, why um, I'm not doing well. Concerned mother, Marcel Douglas, also speaks her mind about the cause of high school dropouts. Everybody said, I want to send my kids to this black school because they stay in school and they know more, but no. For example, I have two boys, they go to public school, and I didn't just leave them. I'm involved, I'm on the council board at school, so my involvement helps my kids to understand and be mature in their work. And if you're going to send your child to school, to, to a black school, of course, the, as a parent, you have to be there all the time, one-on-one. -on -one. The teachers can't do the job because... You discipline the child at home and the teacher tries to discipline the child at school. Of course, the child is going to listen to the teacher because it's not happening in the home. It's not about black school or white school or all girls school or boys school. Everything starts from the home. Yes, there are so many students today who, are, uh, who have single parents and it's very hard for one parent to grow a child. They need two figures in their lives. Because in my past experience, I've seen where kids are not even doing their homework because they have no one to supervise them. They mainly live with their mother for most of the times. And when the mother has to work late, the child is left unsupervised at home. So they decide they want to watch TV or to, to, to be on computer for so many hours. And then so much work is not done. And this contributes to their dropping out of school or, you know, they're not actually doing the work, so they're not progressing because they're not mature enough to handle it on their own. So it, 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 it falls back on social problems too. Even though the school will be open by the fall of 2009, the end result is still uncertain. Torontonians are still divided by this issue. The Toronto District School Board hasn't even decided where they're going to locate the school and whether it's going to be a high school or an elementary school. We'll see where this goes from here. This is Jermaine Ingram. Now back to the studio.